sounds a bit much to live up to. Um, uh, sorry, I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> um, I, these are the two books that were published by Hearing Eye, and um, I have donated them to the bookstore, so I'm going to read uh, a couple of short poems from this and a poem from this uh, to encourage you to go and uh, spend another five or two on the bookstore. And, uh, and after that, one more poem. So four poems in all. And uh, I hope you won't be lifting a finger at me. <laughs> uh, so uh, this, this is a sonnet. It's called Top Floor. Uh, and it was written when I lived on the top floor. This morning, there are three men on the roof next door, chimney pointers. I expected to be alone with no external proof that I exist, to potter, undetected, a nobody, a mouse, unheard, unseen, undressed, unwashed, the luxury of seclusion. But we're a two-way television screen, a face-to-face, -face, a parallel occasion, them edging round the tower of bricks like tightrope men, in bubbly model, bubble, muddy bobble hats and donkey jackets, pausing now to mix new mortar, light up, hands around the match, and me here sneaking coffee, timid guest in someone else's airspace, dispossessed. <laughs> and, and this is a, 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 another sonnet. It's called I'm Not Writing My Novel. <laughs> I get up puzzle on a little poem. I eat a bowl of yoghurt, wash my clothes, then fetch the post and make the bed. Too late by now, I think, for getting down to prose, <laughs> which can't be dreamed up in the bath. Deadlines is what I need. <laughs> exactly what I've got. Dead lines. <laughs> Espaliered, rootless, black on white, to rearrange in miles of well-turned plot all bedded in and diligently pruned, with every branchlet tensioned on a string. Meanwhile, the sturdy poem grows and blooms, self-watering, an independent thing. Not much to do but turn it to the sun. Its stems will straighten up, its petals sing. <laughs> and um, this book, Reaching Peckham, is um, it's like a kind of novel in verse. Um, and as with almost every novel you buy, you'll find a blurb on the, on the uh, back cover telling you a little bit about the characters and uh, the plot. Uh, this also has a blurb, not quite on the back cover. So I'm gonna read you the blurb, which will tell you a little bit about the main characters. Uh, and it's set in Peckham in the 1990s when Peckham was a great deal less uh, gentrified, shall we say, than it is today. And I'm sorry if you were at the uh, at the poetry book fair yesterday because I read this then. But I just I just think if I do the blurb, you might go and buy the book because you might want to hear the rest of the plot. Uh, okay. A virgin poet's hard to find. She pushed him down, silently removed his new clean clothes slowly raised her arms. Her bead top floated down, landed with a shucking sound. Slowly, she bent down, removed her stout black boots, removed her matte black tights. She had nothing more to lose. Meet gorgeous goth, Una, who, with her bewitching kiss, transforms Oliver, solitary, overweight. He dare not think of girls, for him, eating is like aspirin to Oscar. That name fell round him like a well-cut suit, declared him poet laureate of Peckham. <laughs> William Blake was here, here on the ride. He saw a tree of angels. He had visions, long gone now. But Mehmet's heard of him. The school was on a local history project before he got excluded. Yeah, kicked out for punching Mr. Gabriel, codenamed Muscles. Meet Mehmet's angels, Tifas, Mopanikas, neighbor wrestlers, glamours, 
jungle blasters hanging round the Burlington estate where Oliver sits hustling out pentameters located in his top floor council flat on the walkway confetti of lottery tickets spaghetti of graffiti in the streets tin banks of knackered Carlos. Meet the author, Norma, 60s victim, guitar-toting, hash-smoking, acid-dropping, 90s dropout. Runs the drop-in centre down in Peckham. Might drop everything for a nice new man. <laughs> Watches, listens from her semi on the rim. Mehmet's teacher, friend of Oliver, first person unwrapping them, a landscape story, characters. And um, finally, um, I'm a bit uneasy about doing this, but um, I feel by the time it gets to this time in the day and there's been nine hours of poetry, a little bit of black humor is required. <laughs> I, was, um, I was not brought up in a religion, but um, uh, people who were tell me that um, mankind, well, man anyway, uh, was created by God in his own image. And um, when I look around at some of uh, the uh, unpleasant prats uh, <laughs> leaving the world at the moment, I begin to wonder what the hell God was like. <laughs> so, so this is a, and I see him as a sort of, as a sort of W. Bush, sort of Trumpish kind of, character, you know, a sort of who never really grew up properly and is just making a bit of mischief down below one way or another. But anyway, um, don't take it too seriously. But this is in the voice of God and it's called Goofing Off. And I have to use this terrible uh, Southern American accent, which I hope you'll forgive me for. <laughs> okay. Smoke in the hole where the world used to be. Showers of stone and earth and water shooting up. Itty bitty trees and bricks floating around. Number of limbs going by, including bits of Madonna's thigh. Pope's severed head flight up, hit me plum in the eye. Darndest thing. Of course, I knowed I shouldn't have done it, but I was just a kid. Didn't know I was responsible for every blame thing I did. Place was kind of paradise. Dumb beasts fooling about the forest. Slippery fishers in the sea not putting their mouths out of water. I did give some bugs tongues of poison. But I kept them lil. Only give them small wings. It was puberty done it. Couldn't stop eyeing myself in the mirror. Give me an idea. Had to try it. Disaster. For I knowed it, them sapious critters done seen the resemblance their selves. They was fashioning stuff, shucking thunderbolts, picking quarrels, hunting heaven all over, find their creator, get their revenge, started crowning their own kings. Was kind of mean giving them heads, minds. I know it. Planting them down there in time. I give them a quantity of it. Pretty soon, they was addicted. Trading the stuff. Peddling derivatives. Hope. History. Memory. All kinds of junk. Whole planet started to tick. Got myself out quick. Can't abide them nuclear wing dings. My mama says, if I don't quit messing with them uh, g g genes and uh, them crow, them chroma, them, them, uh, them X's and Y's she got in the barn in them old suit jars, she ain't gonna let me go play out in space again. She gonna send me back where I come from, beyond the galaxy, out of sight and ever stretching infinity. How far in God you something hell's that? <laughs> You'll know how long's a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs>